Arise, to get up, go, move from one place or point to another. Alright, hey everybody, welcome back once again, it's your girl Jasmine. So, uh, basically today we're going to be talking um, about, you know, basically when God tells you to arise and go. Um, and so basically that is the words that stood out to me in my Bible, uh, this week. And, um, it was very important to me because, you know, I'm, I'm writing a blog. Um, I have a blog and basically it's called Soaring High Above Your Past. I'm going to post a link down bottom if you guys want to go check it out. But this week I was writing on, um, the little link that you can click on that says life after prostitution. So, um, I did um, a blog because I've been having some silent frustrations because um, I've been having a hard time trying to really love people um, because of my past, um, because of being out there and being wild. And, you know, when you really want something more than anything in the world, but it's just like I do this thing where I want it so bad, but I will... Um, do everything to sabotage um, my relationship and it's hard it's difficult for me because you know I want it but it's just like do I really want it like I want it you feel what I'm saying but it's just like I don't want it to end but at the same time if I end then I don't have to worry about it ever ending and I don't ever have to worry about in the future losing it but it's like okay now that you know I'm trying to kind of push it away it's just like oh my gosh you know do you see what you're doing jazz like wow jazz like for real get it together so um yeah so we're kind of gonna um, go into the lesson. So basically we're going to be in Jeremiah 18 and the word of the week is to arise and go, which means to get up from where you are. Um, so if you look in Jeremiah 18, we're talking about the potter and um, basically they're talking about how God wants to mold uh, your life. You know, and I think about my life right now in a sense, in a whole, and how I'm having a situation where, you know, my view on you know, being able to love someone is marred, and we're going to be kind of talking about that and how uh, certain things in our life have been uh, constructed in a certain way where we don't view life in a certain matter, and so our view is kind of, you know, disfigured. It's not the way that it should be, and so, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if your life isn't how it should be. God can always mold it and bring it back together. He is the potter. So, Basically, we are going to start, and um, we're going to be in Jeremiah 18. Um, so it says right here in Jeremiah 18, it says, The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and, from the Lord, saying, Arise and go. Meaning, get up, Jeremiah. Get from where you are. I need something, and I want to show you something. He said, Go down to the potter's house. There I will cause you to hear my word. And then I went to the potter's house, and there was making something at a wheel. And the vessel that he made of clay, he made it again from another vessel. And it seemed good to the potter to make. And then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O oh, house of Israel, can I not do to you uh, with, with, with you as this potter, says the Lord. Look at the clay in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand, O oh, house of Israel. So we think about God. He told Jeremiah, look, I need you to get up and go. So basically, uh, when God had Jeremiah to arise, uh, he had instructions to go with what it was that, you know, uh, he wanted Jeremiah to do. You know, God, whenever he wants you to get up and go do something, he's never going to leave you without instructions. You know, to go means, you know, basically to basically go to another place. You know, you can go, you know, when you think about being at a green light. You I mean, you're no longer at stop. You're at go. Go ahead. And you travel along, you go. So, you know, God basically had instruction for him to go. When the children of Israel were leaving the promised land, you know, God had a place for them prepared. So if God's going to tell you to arise, get up and go, basically he has instructions for what it is um, that he needs you to go do. And so basically he was telling him to go to the potter's house because, you know, God had a word for him. God had something for him to see. God wanted him to acknowledge, you know, this is what I'm going to do. And so then Jeremiah went and uh, you know we must take the steps to go to where it is, wherever it is that God wants us to go you know whenever he tells us to rise and to go you know and sometimes going you know it takes faith you know even if you don't want to 
you know, even if you don't even know where it is that he's taking you, you must take that step of faith, you know, the Bible says that, I mean, not everybody is going to take that step of faith, but, you know, in order to grow, you know, at some point in our life, you know, we are going to have to take a step of faith. It doesn't matter even if you're in the world, you know, if you don't know Christ, you know, at some point in time, people are going to take steps of faith, no matter who it is you are. You know, there's always going to be a step of faith. There's always going to be a place where people are uncomfortable, where they're going to have to do something that is new to them. And so, you know, when we think about faith, you know, Hebrews 11, one says, faith is the substance of the things, hope for the evidence of the things unseen. So basically, Jeremiah was going to the potter's house because God wanted to show him something. You know, he had to take a step of faith. We think about Abraham when God told him to get out of the promised land to the place where he would uh, get out of the land where he was to a place that he would show him. Basically, in uh, Genesis 12, uh, basically, God was going to take him to a place where he's never been. Um, you know, he left blindly. He walked blindly, not knowing where he was going, but trusting God in faith that he would go somewhere. I remember when God first told me, Jasmine, I need you to quit college and I need you to travel to California, go to a certain street. I had never been to California. It was halfway across the country. I'd never been anywhere, you know, over on the other west coast of the country, but I knew that God was calling me there and I knew that I had to be there and so when God told me that's where I want you to be that's where I was when God told me that it was time for me to go to Tennessee I got on a plane I flew to Tennessee when God sent me to Florida he showed me that that was my promised land kind of like you know he took Abraham out of the place that he was into a land that he was going to show him, which was the promised land. God did the same thing for me. He brought me to my promised land, which where it is that he wants to bring me in my life. You know, so I walked blindly, not knowing where my road was going to end, but just knowing that God had a destination for me and just trusting him in faith that I was going to get to the other side of where it was that he had for me. So when Jeremiah got to the potter's house, uh, the potter was molding something, a vessel, basically, you know, um, that had been marred, which means, you know, damage, broken, you know, we think about our own lives. We are all damaged, broken people. You know, we all have issues. We all have problems. You know, like I had just said. You know, I have an issue that I just pray that is going to be fixed sooner or later. I'm looking, uh, you know, about a year ago, I did a video called Breaking Down Walls. Um, and God said that he was going to use someone in my life to help me break down my walls. And he has used that person. But it seems like the person he used to help me break down my walls in my life is slowly fading away. And though I want them to be close, they are fading away. Why? Because it is taking longer than I thought for my walls to break down. But we think about right here how God, you know, he's a potter. He can mold, you know, just like I know that God is going to mold me in my life and that, you know, even though I'm damaged and I'm marred and I'm broken, God can reconstruct us. You know, if, if you're broken in your life, if you're damaged in your life, if there's something in your life, God is saying, you know, arise, get up, you know, there's something that I want to show you, there's something that I want to do in your life, look at, this is what I want to do, I know that you're broken, I know that you're a damaged vessel, but you know, I can do the same thing to you that I'm, that the potter is doing to this clay, I can remake you, remold you, and turn you into something so much different than what you were before, you know, uh, there's not, you know, when we think about God, you know, when we come to Christ, when we give our life to Christ, we are broken individuals, and when we come to Christ, God transforms us and turns us us, uh, into something that we were no long that we once were not you know we're not into something that we were you know you think about you know I, I'm writing a blog about how I used to be a prostitute I'm no longer a prostitute you feel what I'm saying uh, God can transform our lives and do things uh, within our lives that you know from brokenness to uh, you know being shaped into a new vessel you know molded into a new uh, you know something new you know the Bible talks about how when we come to Christ we are new creatures in Christ meaning you know old things have passed away behold all things become new we become new uh, all those old things that we once were we once were marred we once were damaged we once were broken those things are going to pass away they are no longer going to be because God can transform us can turn us around can and fix our broken pieces can take you know uh that you know pottery that clay you know that vessel you know we are vessels we are our vessels and he can take that vessel that you are and he can mold you and turn you into something completely different and then what you are you know that seems pleasing to him uh pleasing to him uh just as abraham he was uh to get out of the uh 
you know, you think about Abraham, he was to get out of the place where, uh, you know, to where God showed him because God had a plan for his life. He was going to make him, you know, we think about Abraham, you know, he was going to make him a father of many nations, a father of many nations. Here he was, um, his his wife was barren. He he had no children, you know, and he was in a place where, you know, he was just there. And God told him, look, get up. You know, I'm going to make you a father of many nations. You know, he was going to mold him into something different in which he was not at that point, you know. Um, and basically, God was just like, look, you know, I'm going to bloom you where you're planted, you know, and I'm going to condition you in the area in which you are, you know. Uh, you think about, uh, you know, Abraham. You know, when we think about arising and getting up and going, you know, Abraham, if he did not move from where he was, he would not have been able to be molded into what it was. You know, sometimes we have to be in the place where God wants us for us to become who it is that he wants us to become. We can't be in a certain place. We think about trees and stuff like that. Certain trees do not grow in certain areas. I was just in Florida no palm trees grow up here in Massachusetts. It does not happen. So sometimes God has to move us out of a certain environment for us to become what it is that he wants us to become. You know, I think about when I first got saved, God took me and I moved to Virginia and I got out of Massachusetts and I bloomed and I, you know, I started living for Christ and I started doing these things, you know, and it, I bloom where God planted me. I bloom where God wanted me. And sometimes we have to arise. We have to get up and go. But in, unless you get up to the place and go to where it is that God wants you to be, you will not be able to become what it is that God needs you to be if you're not in that place. So I'm going to put up the first few questions and then we're going to carry on. All right, you guys? Peace. Where is it that God is telling you to arise and go? Why? Where in your life do you believe God will transform you at? All right, so we're going to be in chapter 19 of First Kings. Uh, so it says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, he had executed all the prophets of the sword. Then Jezebel sent the messenger of Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if if I do not make your life as one of of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and he ran for his life and he went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and he left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey in the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree and prayed that he, that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Uh, then here's where it starts to go. Then at verse five, then as he lay under as he lay and slept under the broom tree suddenly an angel touched him and said arise and eat then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water so he ate and drank and he lay down again and the angel of the lord came back the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for you and he arose and he ate and he drank and he went in the strength of the food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Uh, but basically, um, <clears throat> Basically, what I want to start off by saying is, um, here we see Elijah, you know, an angel told Elijah, you know, to arise and eat, you know, to get up and eat, get up, eat. And, you know, when we think about this, you know, uh, we think about, you know, when the Lord makes provisions for our life, you know, he makes provisions because he knows what, you know, what is to come for our life, you know, what is going to happen, you know, even when we don't even understand, you know, but the provisions are always enough. Um, yesterday, I'm actually going to tell you guys a story of what happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, I was flying home and I was um, in Virginia with my mom and my mom said, well, you have no money. And I said, um, no, I don't. So she went into the store and she handed me $20 to get home. Um, well, after my flight. Now, I say this only because, you know, I think about, um, 
you know, how God makes provisions for my life. You know, when I stepped out on faith, you know, I never had to worry about where I would sleep. You know, God was going to make a way, you know, even when things went wrong. I recently went down to Florida and, um, you know, uh, you know, I only had $10, but the money, $10 lasted me enough for a week full of groceries. You know, I ate every single day. Um, I just think about how God, you know, and it was like a good meal, like, you know, a good meal like something filling, nothing, you know, that was just like, okay, not filling, but it was filling. I had a good meal every single day. Um, you know, one night, you know, I end up uh, staying in a hotel, you know, and I didn't have the money for the hotel and, and uh, someone ended up paying for me to stay in the hotel, you know, and then the next day, you know, I didn't think that I was going to make it home because of the snowstorm. And so, um, you know, my boyfriend called my mother and my mother was able to, um, they were able to switch, you know, God set me up that I met this woman last time I was there and she was able to transfer my ticket so that I could, uh, do a, like a two day layover in, um, Virginia until the snowstorm passed over in Massachusetts, you know, and then I wouldn't have had no money for food. You know, God made the provisions. He made the way and it lasted me until I got to the place of where I was, you know, so that's basically what we're going to kind of look at right here. Uh, when you look at, um, the angel basically came to Elijah, you know, when God tells you to get up and go and cause he wants to do something in your life, basically, um, We'll see that he makes the provisions for you, uh, and they're and they're going to last as long as you get to the next place in which it is that he needs to bring you to. Um, and so we see it's you know the angel told Elisha to arise to eat after he had asked the Lord to take him away, uh, basically to take his life. And after he told him to arise and eat, you know he also provided him everything he needed. So God basically, if God is going to tell you to arise and go. Um, whatever it is molding your life and whatever it is that he needs to do, he is going to make the provisions to do it. You know, um, he's going to give you what it is that he needs to give you for you to be in the place and where it is that he needs you to be. Uh, we think about Elisha right here. It says, um, it says, arise and eat. And then he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water so there was the cake it was on coals and a jar of water he told him to eat but he also gave him the food to eat it <clears throat> god is never going to tell you to do something and not give you the means to be able to do what it is that he has set you out to accomplish um there is not ever going to be a time where god tells you i need you to do this and him not have the means to for you to accomplish what it is that he needs you to do. Um, he will always give you what it is that you need and it will last you. Um, you know, it's going to last you. It's never going to be less than what it is that you need. Uh, we look again, you know, it says, uh, so he ate and he drank, but then, you know, he lay down, you know, and the angel said to him, arise, you know, because the journey is too great for you. But we see that it says, so he arose and he ate and he went on the strength of the food for 40 days and 40 nights. It lasted him that long. Why? It's a, whatever provisions God makes for you is going to last until you get to your destination. You know, he's going to continue making provisions for you until you get to your destination. You know, I went on my journey and I had provisions for myself every single night. There was this one night that, you know, I was just like, okay, I'm probably not going to eat. And then I ended up going over to my boyfriend's sister's house and like, she was like, oh, you want some shepherd's pie? And I was like, sure. You know, I never had to worry about God not being faithful in my life or where my next meal was going to come from or what, you know, what was going to happen. It was just like, it just, worked out you know in a sense you know god always works it out you know he always makes sure that you know if he has something for he that you that what it is that he needs you to do that he's going to work it out you know and it's gonna last you like i had said you know um <clears throat> so um you know you don't want to take uh, what he says lightly because you know we think about this because Elijah kind of took what he said lightly he didn't really understand and he kind of like went back to sleep and the angel basically came back a second time and touched him and woke him up again uh, you know we don't want to take what God ta you know is lightly we want to think about you know we think about this you know if Elijah didn't get back up and finish you know the food and all that stuff would it have lasted him the certain amount of days in which 
it was um, that he went on his journey. You know, we want to make sure that we are listening to the full instructions of God. You know, like I said, God gives us instructions every time he tells us to go arise. You know, he told Jeremiah, arise, get up to the potter's house. You know, we, um, and basically he had provisions for him, you know, and, um, he had certain provisions for him in which the things in which he wanted to do for him in his life. So we're going to continue on. Um, and it says, and there he went into a cave and he spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, mm. he said, I have been very zealous, my Lord, God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant and torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. And then he said, go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks and the pieces of the Lord, uh, pieces before the Lord. And the Lord was not in the wind, and after that in the wind, in an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, but after that a still small voice. So it was when Elisha heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elisha? Um, basically, God was just like, look, I don't want you to be here. You need to go somewhere else. You know, I don't want you to be here. So basically, you know, Elisha basically, you know, even though he had the food enough for 40 days, you know, he ended up in the mountains. He ended up like somewhere else. And God's just like, what are you doing here? Like, I need you to be somewhere else. What are you doing? And so, so it was when Elisha heard it, he wrapped his face in the mantle and he went on and stood in the cave and he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Louisville have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they seek to take my life. Then the Lord said to him, go return your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king over Syria. So basically God had a plan for him. You know, he had something that he needed him to do. And, you know, he made the provisions for him to do it. He gave him the instructions of the things in which he it needs for him to do. So basically whenever God tells you to arise and go do something, you know, you need to go do it. You know, we think about, um, the children of Israel as they marched around the wall of Jericho for Jericho to come down. Jericho hung down. God gave them an instruction, though they sound silly, though they sound stupid. God knows what he's doing. You know, if you're in a place where you don't need to be in your life, God is going to move you from that place. You know, he's going to bring bring you to the place of where it is that he needs you to be. So you just want to make sure that you're listening to God in um, your life. So I'm going to put up the next few questions and then we're going to carry on, all right? What provisions has God made for your journey have you hid away because you feel defeated on your journey is god asking you what are you doing here because he needs you to be somewhere else all right you guys so um one of the things that i really want to say to you guys is um when you think about the road of um damascus when you think about damascus you know it is a crossroad and so basically when i was here you know i thought about um, Saul, you know, and when God had told Saul, you know, arise, you know, arise. Um, and basically, you know, I, I thought about Damascus too, because they were just talking about the wilderness of Damascus. And whenever you see Damascus in life, you always see like, it's just like a place of like, you know, basically it's like a turnaround place, you know, it's like a place where things just turn around and you just start going in a different direction. You know, you're no longer in the place where you know you are but it's a you know it's like it's, it's a change you know it's a change from where you are and so um we're going to be in Acts chapter 9 and we are going to um <clears throat> I'll start in verse 1 um so basically we're talking about Saul then Saul still breathing threats of murder against the disciples of the Lord went into the a high priest and asked letters for him to the synagogues of Damascus so that if he found any who were uh, of the way whether men or women he might bring them bound to Jerusalem as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly a light shone around him from heaven and then he fell around uh, to the ground and he heard a voice saying Saul Saul why persecutest 
persecuting me. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the gods. Uh, so he trembled in astonishment and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. Um, <clears throat> you know, so then it continues on and it says, and the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing the voice and seeing no one. And then Saul arose, um, from the ground. And when his eyes opened, he saw no one, but he, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight and neither ate nor drink. But there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And, him, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. Then he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said, Arise and go to a street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for one uh, called Saul of Tarshish. For behold, he is praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming and putting his hand on him so that he may receive his sight. Uh, so that we, right now, we see that, um, basically, here we are at a crossroad. Uh, Saul is a man who is persecuting Christians, um, and he comes to a crossroad in his life. Uh, he becomes blinded. Uh, he was going in one direction, and now, because he is in, uh, you know, because he was blinded on the road to Damascus, God is about to put, bring him into a different direction in his life. And whenever we come to a crossroad in our life with God, uh, we start going into a different direction. Basically, uh, uh, we see this, you know. Uh, so, you know, whenever people are heading towards Damascus in their life, you know, they're at a turning point and they're moving to another place, you know. Um, if, you know, you think about God, you know, if he's a potter and he wants to mold you in, you know, one way, you know, it's, he's molding you into another direction. He's molding you into another person. He's molding you into something else that he wants you to be because God has a purpose for you. He has a plan for you. He has something that he created you from the beginning of time, you know, you think about Jeremiah, you know, uh, or, well, okay, think about Samuel, Samuel was, you know, in the church, he was like, you know, you could consider him, you know, just working in the church until God revealed himself, not until God revealed himself to him did he realize that he had a plan and then once he understood his plan he was more able to walk in it you know like I think about myself you know when God called me away from school you know I walked away blindly not really understanding what it was that God had for my life but the more I started walking in it the more God started revealing more and more of his plan now that I I'm walking in it now that he's molded me. I now understand what God's plan is for my life. So I'm more better able to walk in what it is that he has shown me. I'm no longer blind to what it was that what it is that he has for my life. Um, so when Saul was on the road to Damascus, God had him rise up and go into the city where he uh, would leave on a new path. He would no longer, uh, you know, go you know, he would no longer leave, you know, uh, being, uh, being the same Saul that he was. Saul became Paul. He was no longer going to be the man that he was. You know, when God appeared to him, you know, he said, arise, go into the city. There was a reason why, because God had a plan. Whenever God tells you to go to do something, he already has a plan prepared for you. You know, and the Bible says, you know, in my house are many mansions. If I, if there, if it was not so, I would not have told you I go to prepare a place for you you know whenever God has you know tells us to rise and go you know he doesn't have a place not prepared there is already a place prepared um you know he's not going to tell you not to, you know to go somewhere and not have something prepared for him you know he had so Saul rise and go to the city and Saul you know would find his purpose there his eyes would be open to God's plan and what it is that he had for his life you know he he he, he even though he was blind he was going to get have his eyes open you know Saul Saul got up you know um and basically the, the key here is to get up and go you know you know we look at in verse 8 um is Saul got up and he went. He did what God told him to do. Even though he didn't know why God was telling him to do this, he still got up and go. It says, then Saul arose from the ground. 
he he was on the ground you know he was in a low spot in his life he didn't know where who he was where he was and sometimes when we're in like the lowest spots in our life you know when we don't know who we are where we are and what we're doing you know in our life you know the best thing is to rise up to get up you know and he realized that he was blind he realized that he didn't have no real real direction for his life he realized that he had been walking in this blindness for so long you know and he just needed to get up and do what it was that god um told him to do because then he would receive his sight and basically you know we see that with ananias because it says um in verse 12 and a vision he has seen a man named ananias coming to and putting his hand on him so that he might receive his sight you know god had showed him look you know I'm going to show someone, I'm going to give you someone who's going to give you dir your direction. I just need you to get up and go to where it is that I need you to go. And sometimes, you know, if we don't get up and go to where it is where God needs to go, we won't ever get that direction and where it is, you know, God may send someone to us to help us, you know, to get to the next stage and where we need to be. Um, basically, I had wrote my notes yesterday. I said, God may... Uh, use someone else to help you get to the next place you need to be. When God had a plan for Saul, he used a person Saul would least want to see, which is a Christian. Saul hated Christians, but it was a Christian who God was going to use to, re to relieve Saul from his blindness. God will use the most unexpected people along your journey, sometimes opposite of what you would like or not the same as you. The children of Israel had Rahab the harlot to help them get to the next destination after their cross point in their life, which was crossing the Jordan. Sometimes when God is going to get you to the next place in your life, he is going to use the least person that you least expect. Here's Saul. Saul hated and persecuted Christians, but God was going to use a Christian to give him his vision. Um, you think about the children of Israel. They had Rahab. Even though Rahab was a harlot, God was going to use a prostitute to help them get into the land. He was going to use someone unexpected. You know, God is going to use someone unexpected to get you to the next place and where it is that he needs you to be in your life. You know, and it's going to be different, but you need to just go on what it is that God is trying, and the person who it is that God is trying to use. Sometimes it just seems strange that God would use, you know, certain people in our lives to, you know, help us do certain things. But I think about, you know, in my life, like, the person who God has been using to help break down my walls, I would have never expected. You know, I would have never expected, you know, God, you know, how are you using them at all people? You know, I would think that God would, you know, use someone super spiritual and you know someone who is like you know like you know because I'm like church 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 I love Jesus I love Jesus and you know God is hasn't been using someone who's just like I'm a pastor and you know I love God and you know I mean he's been using you know someone who I would at least expect but you know what it's doing the job in which it was that he put out for it to do you know Ananias was doing the job in which God had wanted him to do even though Rahab was a prostitute she was doing the job in which God needed her to do you know she was there and and you we have to look out for you know who it is that God is going to use in our life to get us to the next place and where it is that he needs us to get us to and if we're not careful we can run off the person or people that God is sending us to help us get to the next place where it is that he needs us to be. And we need to be very careful of that because if not, how are we going to get to the, the next destination? If Saul would have uh, seen Ananias and been like, oh, I'm going to kill him, you know, he's a Christian, then how would have Saul received his sight? Has God shown you who he is going to use to get you to the next place in your life what has God been molding you into to fit his new direction for your life all right you guys thanks so much for tuning in until we meet again all right you guys God bless peace